Have you ever wondered if a certain activity is appropriate to do on the Sabbath or not? Hi, and welcome to Tween Talk for Latter-day Saints, your questions and clear answers. I'm Tiffany Thomas, and I'm here to help guide you through gospel topics in a way that makes sense to you. It's easy to feel lost when there are so many different voices out there telling you right from wrong. It can be hard to know what to do when you have questions. We're going to take the common gospel questions that you as teens and tweens have and answer the why, what, and how about them. We'll go into the doctrines and principles so you can figure out how to apply them to your own life. If this is your first time joining us, make sure you listen to the first four podcasts in order first, or you'll miss out on a lot and be a little lost. And if you need something to draw or sketch during this podcast while you're listening, I've got some coloring pages on my website, savingtalents.com forward slash podcast. You can also find the references and transcript for this podcast there. And then you can find me, Tiffany, on Instagram and Facebook as Saving Talents or on TikTok as Tween Talk LDS. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. This week, we are going to talk about Sundays. I know that a lot of you probably have wondered whether or not something's okay to do on the Sabbath. It's a really big question, and I know that it's one that we discuss in my family a lot. Maybe other kids in your ward are allowed to go to birthday parties, but your parents say that you can't. Or maybe some kids play on sports teams and there are games on Sunday, and your friends get to play and they're in your ward, but your parents don't let you. Maybe some of those friends even get offended when you say you can't do something on Sunday, but they're members of the church too. Or maybe your family does something on Sundays and your Sunday school teacher once said that it's not appropriate to do on the Sabbath. This is one that is a really big commandment and it's one that people fight about a lot and it's always been this way. Have any of you read the book series the Little House on the Prairie by Laura Ingalls Wilder. It's about a family in the 1800s who lived on a farm in the prairie, kind of in the middle of nowhere. The nearest neighbors were miles and miles away and they only had a horse and carriage. So going to church wasn't even something that they did. But you know what they did do? They sat there. Seriously. In the 1800s, they only did a few farm chores like feeding the animals, but then they could only read aloud from the scriptures and just sit quietly in a chair all day long. Now, I don't know about you, but almost anything is infinitely preferable to that time. The Jews in Christ's time and before that had some really specific rules about what you could do on Sundays. For example, you could only take a certain number of steps or you were breaking the Sabbath. And they didn't have pedometers or smartwatches to check how many steps they were doing, so they actually kept track of how many steps they took in a day. Aren't you glad that you're living in today's society? I know I am. So let's talk about this. The Sabbath day. We're going to go over the doctrine, which is the why and the principle, which is the what, and then how you keep the Sabbath day, the application, we'll talk about a few ideas, but that will be for you to figure out on your own with personal revelation. Okay, so why the Sabbath day? What is the doctrine behind it? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, we read that God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested from his labors. But why do we have to rest from our labors? God feels like keeping the Sabbath day is so important that he actually made it one of the Ten Commandments. And then he explained the reason why in Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. He said, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. 
And then later in the Old Testament, the Lord tells the prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 20, and hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. So God wants us to keep the Sabbath day holy as a symbol of our covenants with him, that we believe that he is our God and that we want to follow him. I think President Nelson said it best back in April 2015 when he gave the conference talk, The Sabbath is a Delight. President Nelson said, how do we hallow the Sabbath day? In my much younger years, I studied the work of others who had compiled lists of things to do and things to not do on the Sabbath. It wasn't until later that I learned from the scriptures that my conduct and my attitude on the Sabbath constituted a sign between me and my Heavenly Father. With that understanding, I no longer needed lists of do's and don'ts. When I had to make a decision whether or not an activity was appropriate for the Sabbath, I simply asked myself, what sign do I want to give God? That question made my choices about the Sabbath day crystal clear. And then part of the reason why we keep the Sabbath day is in Doctrine and Covenants section 59 verses 9 through 10. The Lord says, and that thou mayest more fully keep thyself unspotted from the world, thou shalt go to the house of prayer and offer up thy sacraments upon my holy day. For verily, this is a day appointed unto you to rest from your labors and to pay thy devotions unto the Most High. Okay, when you want to do well in school class, do you just go to class and then never think about it again? Of course not. You study the material. One of the best ways to study and remember information is to do some of it every day. Not 24-7, of course, but if you have a big test coming up, you're going to do best if you take some time each day to look at the material. If you try to cram everything into the night before, you might remember some for the test, but then you forget about it right afterwards. And then think about summer vacation. How many times have you gone back to math class on the first day of school and the teacher has to spend the entire first week going over the stuff that you should have learned last year, but you forgot how to do it? The Lord asks us to keep the Sabbath day holy because he wants us to take the time to study him, to study his words and his gospel. Just like you spend a few minutes each day studying math, like doing your homework, and then the day before the test, you might do a lot more, Sundays are that chance to do more. You read your scriptures and say your prayers every day, and then the Sabbath, you dedicate the entire day to the Lord. Keeping the Sabbath day holy has two reasons why. The first is to show God how much you love him and how devoted you are to follow him. It's a sign of how much you value your relationship with him and the covenants you made. And then the second reason is to rest from your worldly labors so you can focus all your mind on the Lord and becoming more like him. And what's the promise? that you'll be more fully unspotted from the world. Now, when I think of being unspotted from the world, I think about a dog. And not a Dalmatian that has spots, but any kind of dog. Have you ever seen a TV show or a movie or maybe in real life where a dog goes outside and plays in the rain and mud, and then he comes inside? And what's the first thing a dog does when he gets wet? He shakes himself and the muddy water goes flying everywhere and gets on everything. Usually there's someone wearing nice clothes or the carpet is white and they just cleaned it or something like that in the movie. So I imagine being unspotted from the world as standing next to a wet, muddy, dirty dog who is shaking himself off everywhere. 
You spend almost your entire week in the world worrying about worldly things. You go to school and the kids are using bad language or they make bad choices. You might have some friends that are pressuring you into doing bad things. You may run into a bad picture or even pornography or hear someone tell a dirty joke. The world is like that filthy dog. Can you get through the week with the world shaking its ugly things at you without it landing on you and staining your soul that was this clean and pure and white on your baptism day? And then on top of that, you have regular things to worry about, like homework and friends and sports. The Sabbath day is your chance to put all of that aside and focus on the thing that is most important in this life, your spiritual growth. Because at the end of the day, all those worldly concerns are secondary. The most important thing is making sure that you're following the right paths on your flow chart, that your soul and your spirit are growing and developing to be more like God. And Sunday is the time that you get to spend on that. So now we get to the what, which is the principle of the Sabbath day. Well, we already read a verse that told us about one of the parts of keeping the Sabbath day, which was going up to the house of prayer, also known as the church, and offering up sacraments, which is taking the sacrament. Taking the sacrament is an actual priesthood ordinance. Remember we talked about priesthood ordinances a few weeks ago? Sacrament is an ordinance just like the temple endowment is, or even baptism. We only get baptized once and we take the sacrament every week. So that kind of makes us used to taking the sacrament. But the sacrament is just as important as baptism. In April 1982, Elder David B. Haight gave a general conference talk entitled The Sacrament. And from it comes one of my favorite quotes of all time. He said, the weekly opportunity of partaking of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper is one of the most sacred ordinances of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and is further indication of his love for all of us. Associated with the partaking of the sacrament are principles that are fundamental to man's advancement and exaltation in the kingdom of God and the shaping of one's spiritual character. We should reflect in our own weekday conduct the spiritual renewal and commitments made on Sunday. We may fail to recognize the deep spiritual significance this ordinance offers to each of us personally. Is it possible that a casual attitude on our part of the routine formality of this sacred occasion might deaden our opportunity for spiritual growth? Isn't that incredible? I know that was a long quote, but it's amazing. I actually have it written down in the back of my scriptures, and I try to read it every time I take the sacrament to remind myself of how important it is. People will try to tell you that you should use the sacrament to think about your week and what you did, but it's actually the opposite. Every single day, you should be thinking, I'm going to take the sacrament on Sunday. Is this choice I'm making right now helping me and preparing me to participate in the sacrament? Can you see how this kind of attitude would work really well to keep you being uns would work really well to keep you unspotted from the world. So one of the principles of the Sabbath day is church attendance and taking the sacrament. But going to church is more than just taking the sacrament, right? Moroni chapter six verse five says, "And the church did meet together oft to fast and to pray." And to speak one with, and to speak one with another concerning the welfare of their souls. 
one way we speak to each other about the welfare of our souls is with going to classes like Sunday school or young men and young women's or primary. The church has been putting a big focus that teachers of those classes should be having lots of questions and discussions and not just a big boring lecture. And that's because we should be talking to each other about the welfare or the status or the state of our souls. How are our souls doing? Are we struggling with something in the gospel? Maybe there's someone bullying you. Maybe you aren't sure if the church is true. Maybe you have an addiction to something. Or maybe you're just not perfect. I mean, there is always something we can improve on and we can help each other. Even if you have the strongest testimony ever, you can always, always learn something. In a CES fireside on February 3rd, 2006, Elder David A. Bednar gave a talk called Seek Learning by Faith. He said, Nephi teaches us when a man speaketh by the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost carrieth the message unto the hearts of the children of men. Please notice how the power of the Spirit carries the message unto, but not necessarily into the heart. A teacher can explain, demonstrate, persuade, and testify and do so with great spiritual power and effectiveness. Ultimately, however, the content of a message and the witness of the Holy Ghost penetrate into the heart only if a receiver allows them to enter. Whether or not you enjoy church is actually entirely up to you. You could have the most boring speaker in the world who goes 10 minutes overtime in sacrament meeting, or maybe a Sunday school teacher who does not make things exciting at all, and you can still learn something. There's a story in the January 2013 New Era about the prophet Spencer W. Kimball. Someone once asked him, President Kimball, what do you do when you find yourself in a boring sacrament meeting? His answer was, I don't know. I've never been in one. Now, this was the prophet. He may have been an apostle at that time, but still he was old. He'd been to hundreds, if not thousands of sacrament meetings. And I guarantee that some probably had speakers or teachers that weren't the best. And it's not like that because he was a prophet or an apostle, it suddenly magically makes him not bored with church stuff. I mean, he was a teenager once, right? And all prophets were teenagers and tweens like you guys and not some holy self-righteous sainted person. But we talked about following the prophet a few weeks ago, remember? They're people. But it's his attitude about church. I can guarantee that if you go to church looking for ways to discuss the welfare of your soul and to improve it, you will find it. And if you're struggling with that, then ask the Lord in your prayers to help you. He will always answer that request. Invite the Holy Ghost to teach you at church, and he'll do it, I promise. So now that we've established the policy of church attendance, let's talk about what to do the rest of the way. Let's talk about what to do the rest of the day, because that's really what you want to know, right? You're in church for two hours, and you probably sleep for eight hours. So what do you do with the other 14 hours on Sunday? I'll give you a hint. You don't have to sit in a chair all day like Laura Ingalls Wilder did. I'm going to go back to President Nelson's talk. What you do on the Sabbath is the sign you give to the Lord of your commitment to him. 
like Doctrine and Covenants 59 said, this is a day to pay your devotions to the Most High. So how do we do that? The Gospel Topics Manual for Sabbath Day on the church's website says, at home, members participate in uplifting activities that help them learn the gospel, strengthen faith in Jesus Christ, build family relations, and provide service. The Strength of Youth pamphlet in that section, Sabbath Day Observant, <clears throat> Sabbath Day Observance, gives in clear gives clearer direction and even includes a few applications. Now, before you get upset about applications being given, since that's what we're supposed to do ourselves through Revelation, remember that the Strength of Youth pamphlet was published by the First Presidency. You know, the prophet and his two counselors. Now, whether or not you want to think of these words as actual commandments or just counsel, Remember how we talked about following the prophet a few weeks ago? We're trying to be valiant in our testimonies so that we can merit the celestial kingdom. In 2 Nephi chapter 9, verses 20, verse 28, it tells us, Oh, that cunning plan of the evil one. Oh, the vainness and the frailties and the foolishness of men. When they are learned, they think they are wise, and hearken not unto the counsel of God. For they set it aside, supposing that they know of themselves. Wherefore their, wherefore their wisdom is foolishness, and it profiteth them not, and they shall perish. And before you tell me that this is the prophet's counsel and not God's counsel, let me remind you of DNC 138, where the Lord says, whether by mine own voice or by the voice of my servants, it is the same. Counsel from the prophet should not be taken lightly. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. Um, are any of you even old enough to know what that means? Never mind. I don't think I want to know the answer to that. So we'll just keep on going. Back to the Strength of Youth pamphlet. First, it talks about your behavior at church. Go to sacrament meeting, prepare to worship the Lord, and partake worthily of the sacrament. During sacrament meeting, be reverent and willing to listen. And be reverent and willing to learn. Refrain from activities that would distract you or others during the sacred meeting. Be on time for your meetings. Yeah. Psst. That means no cell phones and no hanging out in the halls with your friends and then walking into class 15 minutes late. All right, now for the rest of the 14 hours on Sunday that you're awake and not at church, it says prepare during the week so you can reserve Sunday for the many uplifting activities that are appropriate for the Sabbath day. That means do things during the week that are meant for the world so that you can focus Sunday on your relationship with God. Here are some of the things that the First Presidency suggests that you can do on Sunday. Such activities include spending quiet time with your family, studying the gospel, fulfilling your church callings and responsibilities, serving others, writing letters, writing in your journal, and doing family history work. Your behavior and dress on the Sabbath should show respect for the Lord and his holy day. Now for the things that they counsel not to do. Sunday is not a day for shopping, recreation, or athletic events. Do not seek entertainment or make purchases on this day. Let others know what your standards are so they can support you. When seeking a job, share with your potential employer your desire to attend your Sunday meetings and keep the Sabbath day holy. Whenever possible, choose a job that does not require you to work on Sundays. 
guys, there's obviously always going to be exceptions that people make, and that's between them and Heavenly Father. And there's always going to be situations where emergencies arise. I am so incredibly grateful for doctors and nurses who have worked on Sundays when I'm in the hospital with my Crohn's disease and need to be cared for. Or for the urgent care that is open on Sundays when my child wakes up with a fever of 104 and crying in pain. I'm grateful for firemen who are available to put out a fire that happens on Sunday or police officers who can help when there's a car accident on the Sabbath. The laws of physics don't stop just because it's Sunday. Sometimes emergencies in life happen. One spring, my husband and I purchased a few new trees to put in our backyard. I actually remember exactly when it was because it was Easter weekend. We planted the trees on Friday and we put the tree stakes down and we watered them. And that night, a huge windstorm came and knocked one of the trees down. We were asleep and we didn't see it happen. So the poor tree stayed out with bare roots all night long and most of the morning because we didn't even see it through the window. We were really hopeful that, with being, <clears throat> that being without nourishment from the soil for so long wouldn't hurt it too badly. We packed the dirt around the roots tightly and it seemed pretty stable. The next day, Sunday evening, as we ate our Easter dinner, the wind started blowing again and blew that poor tree. We knew that leaving it another night would probably kill it, and we discussed what to do. We remembered a story in Luke chapter 14, verse 5, where Jesus healed on the Sabbath day, and the Pharisees accused him of breaking the Sabbath. Jesus said, which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? Jewish tradition allowed for exceptions like this, and the Savior did too. We decided that the ox was in the mire or the pit for us with that tree, and we went out and replanted it. The kids had a good time, and I have a picture of my husband digging hard with my then three-year-old son in his Easter clothes, complete with a tie and hat, standing and bossing his dad about where to put the tree. Elder Holland gave a talk in the April 2019 General Conference called, Behold the Lamb of God. This was the same conference where Come Follow Me was announced and church was shortened to two hours. He said, as for punctuality, a late pass will always be lovingly granted to those blessed mothers who, with children and Cheerios and diaper bags trailing in marvelous disarray, are lucky to have made it to church at all. Furthermore, there will always be those who unavoidably find their ox in the mire on a Sabbath morning. However, to this latter group we say an occasional tardiness is understandable. But if the ox is in the mire every Sunday, then we strongly recommend that you sell the ox or fill the mire. And I'm just gonna leave this there. The rest of these applications are up to you. If there's one thing I want you to take away from the podcast, it's this. When you aren't sure if something is okay for Sunday, go to the Strength of Youth pamphlet, read over it, Look at the counsel from the prophet and apostles, and then ask yourself the same thing President Nelson does. What kind of sign do I want to show God about how I value my covenants and my relationship with him? How can I be valiant? And remember that you should be thinking about the sacrament during the week and not just thinking about your week during the sacrament. Give that a try this week and see how it changes you and how it keeps you safe and unspotted from the world and brings you closer to God. And I will see y'all next week. We're going to be talking about repentance and consequences. I'll see y'all then. Thanks for joining me this week on Tween Talk for Latter-day Saints. I hope today's podcast helped you learn the what and why 
of the gospel questions so that you can figure out the how for yourself. If you have any gospel questions you want me to help answer, then just go on over to my website, savingtalents.com forward slash podcast and submit your question. And you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram as Saving Talents or on TikTok as Tween Talk LDS. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, I'm Tiffany Thomas, giving you clear answers to your gospel questions. Keep praying, and I'll see y'all later.